Greetings, River Lady here, and we are well into autumn, coming up to the end of October, actually. So I'm still working on my herbaceous perennial videos, and I decided to do a video on my overwhelming Japanese anemones. 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 Like the little sea creature. Anemones, not anemones. Oh gosh. All right. It's not a sea creature. It's my beautiful windflowers. They don't hail from Japan, actually. They originated in China and were brought to Japan where they naturalized. These plants love to naturalize. They will take over your world. And thus they got the name Japanese anemones, not Chinese anemones. Let's zoom in. I have one flower left, and this is my Robitissima. When she was in bloom, she was stunning but she didn't start out like this massive amount of plant. She started out about the size of this little teeny clump that's trying to escape. Tending to your Japanese anemones in the autumn season is really not difficult, but it is a two-step process. First, you have to remove the tall flower stalks that have now produced seed heads. And then the next step, when the foliage turns brown or black, then you want to get in and prune it back to the ground. But right now, my job is to get rid of these seed stalks. The flower stalks of Japanese anemones can grow upwards to six feet tall. This comes up to my shoulder, and you can see all the seed heads that were flowers. When you're pruning, you want to take the stalks all the way down to the bottom where it comes out of the ground. It's important to get down to the bottom of the stalk because Japanese anemones can actually produce new plants midway on the stalk. They're very prolific. They reproduce by seeds, by rhizomes, or by sprouting from leaf nodes. And here you can see Harley hard at work guarding the flower stalks that I've trimmed back from the Japanese anemone that I just showed you. Let me spend a little time talking about Japanese anemone seeds and then I'll show you the rhizomes. The seeds for the anemones are these. They're right here. This is not a seed casing. This is actually, and I forget what this is called, Kali, I think, these types of seeds. This is not a casing. This is not a hard, hard outer husk that the seeds live in. These are actually the seeds that we're looking at. You can see the seeds are attached to little white fluffy tufts, just like a reverse dandelion. You can see the seeds there? Each little tiny speck is a seed, a potential new anemone. And this cap is covered with hundreds thousands, gazillions, I'm not going to count them all. And I'm not going to just toss this. This is going to actually go in the trash because wherever this lands, it will continue to ripen. And then these little seeds will go all over the place. And well, you get the picture. Come with me and I'll show you a more manageable clump of my Robitissima. I did transplant one little piece I think it was three years ago, and it's threatening to take over my hydrangea garden. But I'm gonna whip it back into shape today. So let's go. Here she is, nestled between my big daddy and my summer crush. My endless summer is on the other end of her. I have a lilac tree there. I have a lot going on in this garden, and I need to wrangle her back. And I'm going to start by cutting back these tall flower stalks. As I already mentioned, but it does bear repeating, when you prune these flower stalks off of your Japanese anemone, you want to take the stalk all the way down to the ground. You don't want to leave any chance that the plant can produce a new plant by leaving a little bit of stalk behind. So we're going to go right down to the base. Let's do another one. I'm going to collect these flower stalks in a bucket. 
not lay them on the ground like I did on the other side of my property. I have indoor outdoor carpeting over there and I'll explain that at another time. But anyway, you don't want to throw these stalks in your compost or you'll end up with lots of little baby anemones come summer. Now that I've taken out all the flower stalks, I can get into the plant and remove any dead or damaged stems and just put those in the bucket. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get back and clean up the leaf litter around the plant. Wait a minute. What? Oh, are you trying to escape, you little devil? Uh-uh, I don't think so. In the bucket for you. That little seed head trying to escape is a good indication as to why you need to clean up around your anemone once you're done pruning it. But the, now what I want to do is I want to remove all the leaf litter. You don't want to use leaves as mulch around your plants unless you grind the leaves up really fine. In their full size, leaves provide a waterproof carpet over the soil that encourages fungus to grow under the leaves and prevents water from getting to the roots of the plant. The leaves you take away from the base of your anemone, I would not suggest putting them in your compost bin because you don't know if you have any seed heads in there. You can put them in your town's compost bags, or you can just put them in the trash or burn them. That always is a great autumn thing to do. Seeds aren't the only way that Japanese anemones can spread. So in autumn, you want to be mindful of how many plants you actually have growing in your clump. I have two main plants, but in the back, I've gotten a third plant. And over here, I have another little plant growing. Look at that rhizome. Oh my goodness. These rhizomes come up fairly easily. You don't need any tools. In fact, you don't really want to cut them because you're just leaving the rhizomes under the soil. I try to pull them back as much as I can to get as much of the roots that I can because I don't want little anemones sprouting up. Look at that baby. And he is going to go, you guessed it, he's going to go right into the bucket. Boom. Now I'm going to dig up this clump that's in the back of the other two plants. And here you have it. Three plants were growing from that rhizome I dug up. My goodness, these plants are prolific. Before I leave you, I will mention that Japanese anemones are not the same as the poppy-like anemones that grow from bulbs that are spring flowering. They don't spread as prolifically as the Japanese anemones. All right, so that does it for this video on herbaceous perennials, Japanese anemones. I hope that I've been able to help you learn a little bit of how to treat your anemones during the autumn season. If the leaves turn brown, which they will, if you get hit with a hard frost, eventually we'll see a frost here in New England. You then want to cut the leaves back to the ground and dispose of them. Don't put them in your compost bin. And that's it for River Lady. Wishing you happy, happy autumn and happy gardening.